Welcome. Today we're going to talk about collaborative forecasting. I hope you find this video helpful if you are preparing for any certifications which include collaborative forecasting or if you are just looking to enable it in your org. So what is forecast? I'm not going to go into a deep definition of forecast as the forecast name implies prediction. Um, sales forecast, in Salesforce especially, it is a sales prediction tool. What that means is that if me as a sales rep were to log into my um, task system and look for my forecast tab I can actually look for okay how, how how am I doing right so let's say if I want to look up for the whole 12 months rolling period I can say that okay I haven't done very good in September October or any of these months but I did have a closed opportunity or a forecast for May and that amount was this much and I do have one opportunity in April which is which is not closed but it is in pipeline right so as a sales rep that's helpful and let's say if I had coda there which we will talk about um, if I had a coda given by my manager to me and the manager says alright your coda is 2 million you need to make 2 million sales for this month then I can say I can compare it where how close am I to my quota and for the managers or for the sales manager it is helpful because once they log in they are able to see their um, sales teams quotas collectively and that will all be uh, default shown right here we'll look in look all that in a little bit here so before we get ahead of ourselves how do we enable forecasting well um, any like any other Salesforce to, uh, app, application or tools the first thing we need to do is enable so once you go to your setup you'll find forecast settings click on that and enable forecast once you enable forecast that is enabled in your org you might not see these options um, you might see customizable forecasting if somehow you have a customizable forecasting enabled in your org um, so this might not be the case for you if that's the case so this is a fresh org and that's why I have enabled forecast. So once you enable forecast, you will see all these different options which we will get into. Another thing before um, your users actually start seeing the forecast tab is that you will need to enable on the user record. So let's say I have a user named Laura and if I go to the user, there is a checkbox called allow forecasting. This needs to be checked for all of your users. And now if you have a lot of users, you, you might want to do a data loader and make it enabled. After making uh, allow forecasting, making it to true, you also want to go to the profile of that user. And uh, there is a tab called forecast. Make it default off or on. So forecast tab should not be tab hidden if it is tab hidden they will not see it obviously okay uh, so those are just quick quick items out of the out of our way okay so once we are in forecast settings actually let's talk about forecast hierarchy so right now if you notice here on my forecast I'm a system admin so I can literally look for anybody's uh, higher forecast here if I type in Laura Garza, I can I can see, okay, Laura is doing pretty good. Um, total closed is this much. Commit, best case none, and pipeline. So if I click on this one, right here, basically see how the opportunities changed as per uh, what I'm clicking on. So stage is closed one, closed one, closed one. Forecast category closed. Now if I go to somewhere around here, click on this one. I can see that okay I have two opportunities for January for Lara and stage is prospecting and qualification but forecast category is pipeline which is why I'm seeing this and the close date is 1-30-2018 and I'm looking at January FY2018 so that will start to make out a, make a little bit of sense once you start playing around with this and uh, having few dummy users will definitely help you so since I'm just a admin, I'm able to see everybody's. Now, if Laura logs in, she will not be able to see anybody's else's unless she's a sales um, 
forecasting manager. So let's see how that works. Because forecasting uh, hierarchy is also very important. And to note is that forecast hierarchy is entirely different from your role hierarchy. It is not dependent in any way to your role hierarchy. Okay, so it's definitely it definitely brings all the role. So this is all the roles I have in the system. It will bring it over here, but you will actually manually need to assign uh, who will be the forecast manager for that role. So for example, in the CEO, and once you click assign manager, it will show you what are the users on that which belong to that role and have forecasting enabled. So two things, they need to be they need to be on that role obviously and the forecasting needs to be enabled then you'll see all those users here so let's say I'm, I'm gonna make myself as the forecast manager and then I have so here if I see assigned manager I'll see Laura because Laura is the only person on sales WW so I'm not gonna make her manager and for sales AMER and EMEA I probably don't have so if I click enable users, I can see, you'll see all the available users right here. So this is also another way to enable forecast for all your users instead of if you don't want to do data loader. Let's say if you have 10 users right here, you can select all them and click on here. That way you can enable forecast for them. And same, same concept. Since this role doesn't have any um, roles under it, it doesn't have the assigned manager. Okay. So now let's see how that changed my uh, forecast view. So if I refresh this page, hopefully it won't take too long to refresh it. Um, so let's see. Once I refresh this, uh, one of those lightning errors. So you see how I have arrows now here? Because now I'm the manager and I'm logged in as a manager. If I click on this now, I will see that I see Laura's name because Laura is uh, under my role on this. And another thing to note about hierarchy is that forecasting hierarchy doesn't go one uh, level below. So it will only show me Laura's. And when Laura logs in, if she's the manager, she will see whoever is under her. But I cannot um, see who is under Laura or as such. I will not be able to control their forecasting from here. Okay, so I can actually click drill down to Laura and see. Okay, these all our opportunities are owned by Laura, and, that, uh, and she's doing pretty good here. So that is a kind of functionality that managers love to see and drill down into each sales user. If I had more than one under me, I'll see everybody's here, and I, I also have a tab for my opportunities, and I don't have any here. Okay, so that's how forecast hierarchy works okay so since we have forecast hierarchy sorted out now now let's see how are these closed commit best case pipeline defined so Salesforce by default gives you these four actually five but one is um, last or omitted uh, so that's not that's not in the question of forecasting that's out uh, but usually four of these categories are included in forecasting so the way you can define that is once you go to opportunity, go to opportunity and there's a field called forecast category. Now forecast category, you cannot add, you cannot add any multiple, um, any more categories than what it, what's there. Okay. That's very important. And, but now with collaborative forecasting, you can actually edit what it says. For example, I, I might not want it to say commit. Maybe I wanted to say, let's say positive. So if I say positive, that's what I'm going to see on that uh, forecast head header, positive. Um, you cannot add anything. Now let's see how we define what is best case, what exactly is best case. So that is done in this stage. You might have noticed it before, but it probably wasn't very important since you were not dealing with forecast category but when you go to stages you will see that these are all the stages by default Salesforce Salesforce says okay best case is perception analysis and proposal and price code those are best cases for Salesforce 
if it is a negotiation and review, is positive, meaning commit, which we change to positive. Um, for example, I might not have these stages, which I usually don't use the standard stages. You might have your custom stages and maybe you want, you say, okay, for me, needs analysis is more like positive. It's not, it's not um, pipeline for me. So I can actually change that here and that will reflect in the forecasting immediately after you press the page, of course. So this is how you, this is the relation between the forecast category and, um, and the stage names. Because every time you are here, you can actually uh, see if I find a, let's find, okay, let's find this one. See how even the stage is prospecting and qualification on the category is the same as pipeline because that's what we have defined in the opportunity stages. Okay, I hope that um, that made more sense now. Okay, so we've seen all the columns and what it means, and the quota is something we are not going to discuss today in depth. But something to keep in mind is that uh, with collaborative forecasting, you will need um, an API or data loader to load load in the quotas for each users for each month for each forecast types. So let's say if you have one forecasting type enabled in your org and you have 10 users and you want to load the quotas monthly or for 12 months, then you'll have 10 times 12 times 1, 120 rows of data needs to be entered for, for the quota. And then you can see it here. Um, but that's something I'll, I'll link you in the description to the standard documentation, but I'll probably make another video on how to load the quotas so you can see it here. And then the users can actually compare um, where they are versus the quota. Now let's look at this um, little bar display settings. Actually here you can also see quotas percent attendment, so it will tell you okay you are 10% towards your quota and I, if I don't want to see that quota column I can just remove it since that's kind of useless right now um, and see how the positive is instead of best case um, instead of commit we have positive here because we change that and you can also select what range of data you want maybe I want only six months you can choose so right here okay let's jump into the forecast settings now go to home forecast settings so after you are done enabling your forecast uh, opportunity revenue is one of the forecast type that will uh, be available to you by default now let's see what other forecast types you can have um, so when your forecast type you can actually have opportunities or product families by default these two are the forecast types now for example if you have opportunity splits enabled then you will see multiple um, you'll see two more here called opportunity splits forecasting and opportunity overlay overlay splits uh, but I don't have that enabled so let's let's just go basic today um, and once you're selecting the forecast type you also have forecast measurement um, since we already have revenue, I cannot click on this quantity, meaning what what is the uh, whether you want you are more interested in the amount of the opportunities, or you are more interested in how much or how much how many quantity or how many products did you sell. So if you are interested in quantity, you can also have a forecast measurement quantity. So it will actually sum up all the um, products on. Um, quantity of the opportunity sold so let's let's leave that selected and this is um, select a forecast data type by default is always the close date and that's why we are seeing the forecast range where if you go back there the forecast range is September FY 2017 if I click on this I'll, I'll only see all the September close date uh, opportunities correct so Usually that is the case, but let's say if you are using uh, products, uh, product dates or schedule date, that is a more advanced sales topic, which is tied to product. Basically, if you have scheduling, you might have um, uh, revenue generated per month, per year, and so on. So, and these two are only lightning specific features. 
um, so you, you could select these let's leave it to close date for now though and the next part is select fields to show in the opportunity list which means right here so uh, this is by default right and that's what is selected here now because I am because I am uh, selecting a forecast measurement of quantity I think it's helpful to see the quantity here but and not the amount because I'm not forecasting an amount which is why quantity is selected by default let's see if I will have product date you know you might want to uh, have something tied to the product date or a field which is uh, related to the product date I don't have much experience on this part so I'm just gonna leave it to close date here and uh, quantity and let's hit OK let's see just want to make sure we cover everything here forecast type uh, measurement again uh, measurement is like a roll-up so if you are a manager and if you log into the forecast tab you will see all the amounts rolled up here and for quantity you will see the number of opportunity number of all the quantities rolled up so this is something to keep in mind and um, very helpful for certifications as well so one we have now two different types of forecast forecasting enabled and um, let's see what is uh, forecast adjustments enable forecast adjustment basically what forecast adjustment means is let's say these are all the sums correct so September October November I am saying that okay um, on for January I have one million for fifty thousand of opportunities in pipeline but let's say um, I'm the manager and I'm saying actually it is two millions and I know that for sure it's gonna be two million or I, I want to make certain changes to opportunities I can do so and on top so it basically sorry, it basically adds a layer on top of uh, actual sum because those are summed by default from Salesforce but if you want to enable uh, adjust your adjust it according to your best get, best guess you can do so and it doesn't delete the original uh, sum it just adds a layer to it so I'm just gonna enable it for now and we'll see how it looks and cumulative forecast rollups is also important because now right now since you see everything is zero if it is in pipeline best case and positive are zero because it is only looking at individuals and it's not cumulative or adding it together for example if an opportunity is closed that means it is also commit or positive and that, that means it's also best case it's not pipeline because pipeline only includes open which is why Salesforce uh, lets you enable it so that the manager or the sales rep don't have to do all these calculations themselves now closed only represents closed but commit forecast includes whatever you see positive that is uh, commit let's uh, get used to that positive plus closed and best case is best case plus commit plus closed open pipeline is not closed so you see how there's no close and this is standard you cannot change how it adds up together all right so let's enable that because it makes it easier and you can also configure a default default uh, monthly or whatever quarterly display you want to show on that date field and show code us don't forget to hit that save button and it's going to ask changing forecast type can delete data based especially if you have adjustments already um, and if you're trying to change anything it will delete those adjustments so you have to be very careful but since we don't have anything we can change and delete no problem okay so that is saved up and let's see let's refresh this page okay now you see how we have pencil icon now that is because we enabled um, manual adjustment so as a manager I can go in 
I can say that, uh, let's see, September. I'm gonna say, okay. So you see how without adjustments, it gives you the value. And I'm gonna say 60,000, test or whatever, save it. Now when Laura logs in, she should be able to see this value too. But, and it's also telling me that, okay, this is, this is adjusted. It's not the real um, actual summation. So, so uh, it's very helpful when, when you get into a lot deeper in forecasting. And let's see, another thing I wanted to show you was forecast type. Since we have two different types of forecast, um, now you can actually switch between uh, one view or the other. Right now it's opportunity revenue and that's why you are seeing up amount fields and everything is dollars, right? But once you click on opportunity quantity, you'll see that, okay, maybe the opportunities might be the same if they are in um, forecast category closed, but you see how we don't have dollar anymore, instead we have numbers. So it basically sums up all the opportunity quantity for this six months and uh, instead of amount, we have quantity now. So that's opportunity um, forecasting by quantity. So if you might get a question like, what are different types of forecasting uh, in collaborative forecasting? Or what are the different measurements you can roll up on? So these, are, these are the questions you want to expect in exams. Um, actually, uh, there is a really good documentation and it's called Collaborative Forecast Implementation Guide. If you follow this step by step, this is very helpful um, if you're getting started and it's just 31 pages. What I want, really want to point out is this table right here, which has um, information on the different forecast types and what the rollup is based on. So it's saying if you are choosing, if you are forecasting by close date, your rollup will be based on opportunities amount. If you're forecasting by product date, your roll-up will be based on product's total price and date fields. Similarly, if you are forecasting a schedule date, your roll-up is based on schedules, revenue, and date. So this table is comes in very handy. If you just want, it's a very good read. Um, it also have opportunity splits and custom opportunity field. Something to keep in mind also. So please go through this on your own time.